this series of stories is intended to make you laugh, cry, and reflect on your own life. Enjoy a wonderful man, my dad, sharing stories from his life between the years of 1944 to the present. Ah, breakfast. The first meal of the day. Some are satisfied with a bowl filled with some flakes of roasted, toasted, dried, sweetened, flavored, or just plain cereal. Add a bit of milk or milk, an artificial sweetener or milk, sweetener of choice, and fruit, either fresh, canned, frozen, peeled, sliced, diced, but put in there with it all. The choices in that regard are endless. Sometimes the day calls for one to eat and get on with the daily activities, but there is always that occasion that says it's time for something special. Most often on weekends when the weather's nice and maybe visitors are company and maybe you just feel like doing a little something special. We enjoy reminiscing about and over certain meal times. Grandchildren and children also primarily fit in that category. Saturday morning breakfast was always special when someone was there to help make it so. Now, southern cooking, I'll admit to be a bit prejudiced, is some above the normal fare when southern chefs put their minds to it. Bacon, sausage, ham, pork chops are among the favorite to set the meal, but more often one's thought turned to breakfast. Usually goes to eggs. Yes, indeed, eggs and the variety of how they can be made goes as far as someone's imagination and, and desire to experiment can take them. Maybe because that bird can be enjoyed in many numbers of varieties before it's born as well as after its demise. But their presents with a meal more often than not is not necessarily to make eggs the prime course, but to make it a part of it. Usually when there is family visiting, I'm asked to provide, prepare something that is a family favorite for a long time, tomato gravy. Not a hard meal to put together, but one that is usually going to mean a preferred type of breakfast meat. And an accompaniment side of biscuit, grits, eggs, as you like them, lots of coffee, tea, juice, and or milk. Chocolate for some folks. The preparation is usually simple enough. You make a gravy roux to your liking and add crushed, diced, or stewed tomatoes with whatever seasonings you desire to add and cook to the consistency you want to see flow across the tops of your split biscuit or grits. Add the bacon, count up the slices on the plate, and divide that by the number of folks at the table, then you know how many you can take for yourself. Or if there's venison sausage from last hunting season, dig in. There's probably more in the freezer. Add some grits to your plate, then you have something else you'll need more gravy for. The eggs? Oh no, I didn't forget. As everything is busily being put together, about a dozen eggs are cracked into the bowl, whisk in with a bit of milk, and slowly, emphasize slowly, scrambled into a morass of goodness to be served alongside everything else. Just as they begin to fully set and are done, if you're not too busy filling your fork for the next mouthful, you might notice the table gets a little quieter as folks begin to eat, but it still lives a lot for memories. I've also been known to make a fair pancake as well. Maybe because always insisting on using buttermilk when the instructions clearly say water or milk. Buttermilk's best. And when some second guesser is in the kitchen and tells me I've made my batter too thin, they don't say that after they have eaten a second or third helping. I don't mind using a box mix because they sure do save time. Just find the one that suits you and your recipes best and be sure to use buttermilk. I guess about the only way I don't like eggs is hard boiled. Now, I don't mean fully cooked hard boiled. That usually takes five and a half to six minutes. That is hard boiled and completely cooked. 
The hard boil I'm talking about is when someone puts eggs in a pan of water, then puts that pan of water and eggs on a sto stove top and comes back in about 20 minutes to an hour just before the last bit of water has vaporized. That's not hard boil. That's over the top, well done, rubber, rubberized and done. I even like three minute eggs, usually because my stomach might have gotten stretched out over something. They're very nice with a piece of dry toast and coffee. Oh, let's not forget coffee. I would not begin to know how much coffee is consumed every day just in the good old US of A. And I'm not Googling it up, but I know it'd be a whole lot. I've had coffee in many different places from my big mama's kitchen in Alabama in a bar in El Paso, Texas, a cafe in Pisa, Italy, Heidelberg, Germany, Sinop, Ankara, and Istanbul, Turkey, and various places on their three different continents. One that stands out among them was during my active military days when Uncle Sam thought it would be a grand idea for myself and about 10 or 11 dozen others when camping during the winter months in Germany. Getting to the campsite was a cinch for those of us that could maneuver a helicopter into an LZ or landing zone, but when the weather had been wet and cooler than your average refrigerator, it was less than optimum for the ground troops. Setting up tents for sleeping, briefing rooms, operations, and of course the mess facility was part of making the most of the time there. The flight crews were smart enough to make sure that the mess sergeant knew we would help out in details any honest way we could, and he in turn always first thing had a big boiler of coffee going and ready to serve, followed close by a large sheet cake that you had looking to see if your mama was there. That coffee usually in a large ceramic mug was some of the best I can remember. Maybe it was the warmth during the cold. Maybe it was the break during some frantic or hectic moments. Maybe it was the friend or camaraderie of the time. I think the coffee made them all something a little bit special as well as does a Saturday morning breakfast. <laughs>